जननीं शारदा देवी राम कृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रिवा प्रणमा मुहु We have been thinking of the Navada Bhakti explained in Bhagavata Purana, one of the important Bhakti texts of our Hindu tradition. So many paths are there, so many ways of realizing the truth, so many ways in which we move towards God. The absolute. How the spiritual evolution takes place, how the spiritual unfoldment takes place, how we evolve from the base animal root to the perfected state of the divine perfection, the absolute perfection. The nature is making us. Through various experiences, good and bad, to evolve to our divine, to go back to home whence we came into this world, passing through we have passed through many many lives, and each life, human life, most of us waste entering into again in illusion, but a few who are blessed. With wisdom, who have seen and gone through all the phases of life, and seen the emptiness in the world, and aspiring for the eternal, try to see some other direction. Where can I get eternal peace? Where can I get unending bliss? So they have gone to go, leave everything, evolve. And go. This, this is the plan of nature itself. Is evolution, but we were moving in the opposite direction. Now, when a soul aspires for higher things, he has already started moving in the direction that nature has planned us and brought into the human life. And here we see the we were. Contemplating on the first discipline, the shravana. In shravana, we get spiritual insight. We have been seeing everything from our birth, from the materialistic point of view, of labha, hani, sukha, dukha, seeking always sukha and never accepting dukha, though it is inevitable in nature. And the fact that we have taken human birth. Our merits and demerits are equal. Otherwise, if demerits were more, we would have taken some animal or insect life. If it was if demerits were less, we would have taken two less. We would have taken a higher life. And when they are equal, so sukha dukha has to be equal in our life. So when we see our life. Hmm, The inevitable part, and we are not able to accept it. So our evolution doesn't become possible. I dislike suffering. I want happiness. I don't want losses. I want constant gain. So all this is not possible in life. You have taken a birth. You have a human a body, and as much. Almost as much as sukha, so much of dukha you have to undergo. There is no other way, because sukha dukha, so merits and demerits are equal. It's fruits you have, you alone have to experience. So that is the plan. But I resist dukha. I want sukha. There comes the problem. If I accept as it is, I start calling on God or divine, then my evolution is. Constantly going ahead, but I resist. Now, through shravana, I get spiritual insight. It is now I try, try to transcend my nature. 
I want to change my nature. My nature is to resist. I'm craving for enjoyments. I'm not seeing the consequences, whether it is someone's property or my illegitimate means or corruptions like all things I accumulate for my enjoyment. And I am being degraded every time, demoted into the world because of the load of the karma. So here, when I get the spiritual insight, I understand what is good for me. Suffering gift is good for me, I accept. Suppose I go to a doctor with an abscess, he says I have to cut it open. I say, yes, because I want the disease to go away. So this disease of samsara must go away from me. And I must become divine. I must manifest my inner divinity. It is hidden, it is covered by my animalhood and humanhood. I have to get rid of these two for the divinity to manifest. I get it insight, spiritual insight. Spiritual insight of the things and facts that govern my life. And I get not only spiritual insight, I get spiritual sensitivity also. When I read the saints' life, how they loved Krishna, gopis, how they, these things, in at subliminal level and at gross level also, instigates me. It makes me sensitive to spiritual things. The more sensitive I become to the spiritual things, I become less inclined towards the world. I, oh, worldly enjoyments, oh, what is there? So, detachment from the worldliness, not from world. In the world, I may, as it is, with all family and friends. Worldliness I should start separating from. I get slowly like butter emerging out from curds when it is churned uh, and floating separately in the same buttermilk. How it separates, you see, grain by grain, grain by grain, because of the centrifugal force of throw. Mm. The things of higher density goes forward and of lower density get together. The densities are separated. The butter belongs to higher density. It goes far off each journey. And water remains in the same of less density. So all they start moving towards the surface. The butter slowly separates from the buttermilk. Water portion remains and the butter portion separate and start flowing. Same thing happens when we shravana we do, there is a churning within. It separates your worldly tendencies from the divine tendencies. The buttermilk is left behind, butter starts flowing. This butter is the spiritual sensitivity with which you can perceive the divine. You can perceive God. You can perceive the secrets of nature that govern your life. So through Shravana, I, my mind becomes clear, my confusion goes off, my doubts get cleared on one side, and I develop spiritual sensitivity and spiritual understanding, insight into the spiritual existence of my own being. These all these factors we see this transformation happening. I was telling about the audio visual yesterday. That audio visual, how the children are caught in that mesh of audio visual, you see. And this is the modernity. And this same modernity of TV and all you can utilize to awaken the same thing within you. They will see what is worldly and what is material. 
you will see the same thing what is divine there is in it is we uh, google or youtube you will see there are you can select so many things whole bhagavata in pictorial form you may get somewhere all that is good and great all that evolves you all that makes you clear your understanding and imagination that support your visualization hmm. see when we hear uh, when we audio visual is there then it is supporting your visualization uh, by hearing you create a picture of your room and through audio vision you will get a definite clear visualization by which you can remain dwelling for longer time it is so impressive and all these modern amenities you can utilize modern techniques modern devices so many devices are available now you can utilize whatever is available for you that makes you go towards god and whatever the instruments that may help you to detach from the world you can utilize detachment again you must remember detachment from worldliness not from the world world is divine world is god you will live with family and friends seeing divine everywhere doing all your duties as an offering to god but your mind where is your mind it is at the feet of god what is in your awareness your awareness filled with god a body and mind is working in the world to just continue the life in this world what for or should you live for attainment it is inevitable till you transcend the nature and go beyond there is no escape from constant suffering and bondage from birth to death death to birth that cycle you to go now when that wisdom comes knowledge comes you transcend and start going into the other realm so you see that the shravana is making you transcend and what happens to your identity you had a worldly identity i am son of so and so and you have some personality i am like this i can do this i can do that and this identity of yourself the personality the individuality all this change it was in relationship to the world now it is no more in relation ship to the world you get a new identity in which you are established your identity is totally shifts from the world to the divine you identify your real identity which is with god gets revealed it is said in many places that in scriptures that your identity becomes so clear your because it is real your identification with body in waking state alone and you have an identity real identity independent of body because you separate yourself from bodily existence in sleep you identify with dream body and dream you separate from that identity also you don't have a real identity of your own you adopt the identity with bodily existence and with the moment you associate with the bodily identity you have a father mother brother sister friends and duties and responsibilities but do you have all this in reality no when you are this body alone in waking state alone and what is your real identity your real identity is with the divine it with god 
independent of the entire nature is your identity. This identity makes you your world and identity with your world and all falls off. In the heart of heart, you know nothing belongs to me here. Nobody belongs to me here. I have come here by force of my karma. All these are the products of my karma. I, it is inevitable. I have to do. I am doing lovingly. I am offering myself totally to Mother Nature to be one with all this and do. But my, my goal and my end is different. So this separation from the old identity makes you realize your identity with the divine, with God, with all people as God, with this world as divine, you have a relationship with all people, be it parents or friends or enemies, you have a relationship independent of the external physical relationship of the internal oneness. So the identity with the world gets dissociated, identity with the divine becomes firm and clear through Shravana. And what happens to that identity? Identity makes you one with the divine. It relates, first it relates with the divine. Oh, I am child of God. And the moment this awareness, I am son of so and so, I have this work, I know this much in the world, I have passed so many exams, and all that identity, the false identity, when it is forgotten, your divine identity is divine. You are getting lodged in the divine. You are becoming one with the divine. When you become one with your divine existence alone, you have a direct relationship with God. The constant hearing, my child, how, how the scriptures go on telling you, know yourself, know yourself shift your understanding. So this constant repetition, you are not body, you are beyond mrityu, you are pure, you are divine. Hmm. Why are you clinging to all these unreal things? You have duty, but you need not be attached. Be unattached to everything and do your duties of life. So this understanding, new understanding, good understanding, the awarenesses, all this makes you dwell in the divine, be divine. This is one of the important functions of the Shravana, constant Shravana. What happens to Parishit, you see, he clearly understands he is immortal. He welcomes, he hugs death. He says, take your portion of my bodily existence. O oh, death, you can't do anything to me who is the indweller. I was identified, I used to identify with the body and I used to feel I'm going to die. But now I've got my real identity I am not afraid of death. Hmm. Let with you come now, any moment, anywhere, in any form. So this identity with the spiritual existence, with the divinity, is the most important part. The With Shravana, the moment you have begun the Shravana, going to Satsanga, or going to Guru, or through Adhyayana, you have started the hearing, learning. The moment you started, your new life has begun. Your life in the Divine has begun. Your self-knowledge has begun. Your identity with the body, your self-knowledge through lives of lives was your body. Your self was the body. 
Now, real self-knowledge, Atma Jnana has begun. The day you started hearing Shravana, with Shravana begins your self-knowledge and ends with the realization. How the identity changes, you see. And change of identity, the awareness, see the change in the awareness, how the when the identity changes, how your behavior, your actions, your feelings, everything change. Because you are thinking all these days to be body, you are seeking bodily comforts, bodily enjoyments. Now, no more of that. It has ended. That phase has ended. Just like when you are a child, you are thinking yourself to be a child and you are satisfied with the dolls and small plain things of the world. And as you grew, you started finding disinterest in all those activities of play. How did it happen? Now you have grown up. Do you feel inclined that you should uh, play with your toys? No, never. Because of the growth, because of your awareness has changed, because your identity has changed. Your identity was Balya, childhood. Now you have become an adult and you have grown up. So your identity has changed immediately. You are all childhood days plays, childhood days speaking, everything ends and new field opens up for you. So this transformation we see happening, the identity changing and identity getting established in mm, the divine you find in the Shravana. Shravana is being given most important place in all sadhanas. Now I want to practice any kind of sadhana, suppose even Raja Yoga. First thing is the Guru makes him and sit and whole system. He goes on explaining what is meant by yoga. How does it the your sutras by sutras, it has been formulated a particular way of evolution. Hmm. Chitta Vritti Nivada, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nivada, from there, then Yama, Niyama, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. He goes on explaining. Hmm. Then, after explaining the whole process of evolution, you get a map in your mind. Then begins the sadhana. This is understanding and that is prayoga. Prayoga is actually putting into practice. But before it puts in practice, whole picture is given to you. The Advaita path when you take, when you go to the Guru, all of the Vedanta Sara is taught from the beginning. What are the qualifications of a jnani? How do you enter into the path of jnana? What are your requirements? Hmm. The um, uh, renunciation part, how it begins, you see, Tyaga, it begins with the Vedanta path or the spiritual path hmm, begins with Nitya Nitya Vya Vastu Viveka Iha Mutra Phala Bhoga Viraga Shamadamadi Shat Sambhata and Mumukshutva These are the qualifications. Acquire this. Hmm. The Nitya Nitya just contemplate on the eternal and the impermanent and what is eternal is Brahman. Go on denying what is not eternal. So, Nitya Nitya was to be, it begins with Nitya. Whole picture is given. Nitya Nitya was to be, here Amutra Phala Bhoga Viraga, and then where is the Tyaga? Phala Bhoga Viraga. Here and hereafter, forever giving up all the desires for enjoyment. And here, Shamadamadishat, the sixth call of Shamadamadishat, the 
क्षमा दमति दीक्षा उपरति श्रद्धा समाधान ऑल दिस फाइव सिक्स क्वालिटीज एंड देन तीव्र मुक्षुत्वा अक्वायर दिस अक्वायर दिस देन दे साधना बिगिन्स यमन नियम है ऑल दिस एकी दे योगा एंटर्स इनटू दे वेदांत सी हाउ दे श्रवणा फर्स्ट द होल पिक्चर भक्ति योगा आल्सो होल पिक्चर इज गिवन फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग टू द एंड द गुरु मेक्स हिम सिट एंड नॉट ओनली मेक हिम अंडरस्टैंड गुरु पोजीशन एंड सत्संग का पोजीशन इज डिफरेंट गुरु पोजीशन इज इन अ वे you see my life also practically you can see the guru teaching bhakti you can see him that bhakti is reflecting in every action of his every speech of his whatever he comes out of mouth it is bhakti whatever he is living is bhakti whatever he is feeling is bhakti whatever he acts is bhakti is not only explaining or he is showing in his life similarly satsang when satsang you are in the company of devotees they are all devotees of god they are uh, attached to god they are related to god in some way or other the satsang one may be practicing constant japa another may be in contemplation in another may be in parayana and somehow in different ways you will see each one loving god in different way in satsanga the various ways in which each devotee is offering himself offering all his energies sacrificing himself you will see this is the part of in inevitable part of shravana shravana these people the that is the difference between the internet knowledge and they actually getting from guru when you go to the guru bhagavad gita says you see tad vidya pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya if you want the real knowledge go to a guru how that with the plan know that no here it through no know that what i am telling you now know it that with the pranipatena go and surrender pranipata pranipatena pari prashnena seva what you don't understand any doubt anywhere any clarity you need you ask they will explain to you pranipate na paripresh seveya why this seva is given there it is a part of shravana you see shravana it is shravana means satsanga or guru sanga guru sanga is part of shravana we don't suddenly understand uh, and paripresne na sevaya upadekshanti te jnana jnani na tattva darshina they are tattva darshina they will give you the jnana clear clarify all your doubts eh? eliminate all defects in you that obstruct your knowledge and they will give you what you need pari prashne sevaya 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 is most important not because guru needs your seva you are offering seva you will be observing his life to the innermost what are his feelings how does he hold on to god at all times how does he do all his activities as offering to god every bit of the information you get when you intimately start serving him personally when do when will you otherwise when will you have a person may be when you are meeting in the classroom and guru goes away what he does in the home how is he nothing is known to you but when you serve him being with him constantly 
watching him day and night you will know what is he what is devotion what is love he is teaches not only through words but he teaches through his own life so all these aspects become shravana shravana means it is absorption undergoing transformation in a very possible way that is you are preparing for the next part of the spiritual journey शांति 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 हरि ओ तत्सत्म कृष्णापणमस्तुम